Glycine. So it's an amino acid. What does it do for us? Let's break that down. So amino acids are the little pieces that we break down when we eat proteins. And the proteins are broken down into peptides and the peptides are broken down into amino acids. Once it gets inside your body, you can reassemble all of these things. So you could take a bunch of amino acids and make some peptides, put some peptides together and make a protein, for example. Glycine is one of these. So one of its jobs is as a very, very critically important peptide inside of your body called glutathione. So a peptide is a string of amino acids and glutathione is a tripeptide. So it's got glycine, glutamine, and cysteine stuck together. So glycine, part of the most important tripeptide in your antioxidant system being glutathione. So that's number one. The next thing is you might go into a larger peptide and protein synthesis, and glycine can be used in the formation of lots of different types of protein forms inside your body. So when we eat protein, remember, we're always breaking them down into small units, and when they get to your blood, they're supposed to be single amino acids. So you think, well, I eat all this protein. How do I make my own human protein? The amino acids that aren't used immediately after you absorb them go to your liver and they go to an amino acid pool and they're held onto and then they can be reassembled into peptides or proteins. Glycine is really critical in all of that. Also, glycine is one of the very critical subcomponents in muscle health. So in people who are starting to exercise more, they'll use more glycine. People recovering from surgeries, especially orthopedic surgeries, will need more glycine. All things like that, muscle recovery, muscle repair, muscle function, all have glycine as a piece of a very, very big puzzle, not just glycine, but they have glycine as a piece of a very, very large puzzle. Another thing that glycine can do is to help with blood sugar balance, so the sugar insulin balance. If you recall, what happens is under normal circumstances, unless maybe you're diabetic, you eat carbohydrate goes in, it's broken down into sugar, sugar goes into your bloodstream, right? Your bloodstream then senses this rise in your blood sugar and sends signals over to the pancreas to release insulin. And so the insulin then rises so that it can go out to your cell receptors and bind and help the sugar go into your cell. Because there's no point in raising the blood sugar that's circulating around if it can't get in into your cells. As a matter of fact, there's a very dangerous and potentially deadly pathology that is just that, not letting the sugar into your cells. So if we don't have this balance between the sugar rising and then the pancreatic reflex causing the beta cells to produce the insulin, so insulin can help the sugar in the cell, we're going to have a bad time. Now we could be dysglycemic, hypoglycemic, we could be hyperglycemic, and again, just like the muscle story, that's all a big, big picture. and There's a lot going on there, but glycine is very important in that whole process there of sugar and insulin balance. And then probably one of the more less known or maybe rarely talked about things that glycine does is glycine is also a neurotransmitter. So when we think of neurotransmitters, it's obviously brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerves are going to use neurotransmitters to send signals, open up action potentials and all of that business. Well, we think of things like dopamine, right? The big famous ones like dopamine or epinephrine or norepinephrine or serotonin or acetylcholine, you know, the big name brand sort of neurotransmitters. But glycine is also a neurotransmitter that is very critical. And so it's in a category of neurotransmitters, which is a very small category called chloride channel operators. Now, the famous chloride channel receptor is the GABA A receptor, gamma amino butyric acid sub A, because there's a GABA B that's not a chloride channel. GABA A is the big, heavy use chloride channel in your brain. Well, what are the things that turn on GABA A and what does it feel like? They tend to be sedating items. So the benzodiazepine class of drugs like 
you could think of Valium, right? Xanax, things like that. The non-benzodiazepine types of sleep aids like Lunesta, Sonata, stuff like that. Barbiturates like phenobarbital, they bind there at the GABA complex. Alcohol binds at the GABA complex, right? So these all, why are they inhibitory substances, these drugs or alcohol or whatever? It's because they bind at the GABA-A complex and they open a chloride channel. Why is opening chloride channel slow down neurotransmission? It's because most neurotransmission is flipping back and forth between sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. If I suddenly then keep the chloride on the outside of the cell, my cell just has a kind of a regular expected action potential, neurotransmission. If on the other hand, the sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium are flipping back and forth, but I open a chloride channel, I let the chloride in, it puts kind of a break on the action potential for electrical reasons. So that's why if I immediately activate, like with a, with a sedative, the GABA-A channel, I'm going to calm your brain down. This can be used in a seizure situation. It can be used to put you to sleep. It can be used as part of anesthesia. It can be used for all manner of things, right? Well, how does glycine fit into that? Much less known, but just as potent, is another chloride channel, but it doesn't, it's not a GABA channel. It's a glycine channel. So glycine comes over and binds to this channel, it opens up and chloride goes in. Now, glycine is not nearly as famous as GABA because GABA has alcohol and drugs that bind there, and we, we know a lot about that. But they discovered there's also these glycine channels which open chloride channels and put a damper on neurological transmission as well. And so we would, for example, in people who are having trouble sleeping, glycine, glycine powder is easy to get. It's a little bit sweet, so we have them use some, you know, sleepy time tea or something and put, you know, a couple of spoonfuls of glycine in there and drink that at night. And most people, it would calm their brain down. Now, there's one caveat that you need to know about glycine and calming your brain down, and that is there are certain genotypes of people where there is a backup receptor for glycine that's very excitatory. In the majority of the population, that backup receptor is very not used very much, right? So mostly you get the calming kind of glycine. But if you've ever taken glycine and then you had trouble sleeping or you got kind of hyper, then you have the other genetics and you're, you're activating more the excitatory channel that glycine operates that, like I said, in most people doesn't activate. So what I always recommend to people is if they're going to try glycine, you know, calm me down or whatever, you can just give it a try at a small dose, 500 to 1,000 milligrams. And if it kind of either no, no effect or makes you feel tired, you're good to go. If you try it and you feel kind of jittery afterwards, or like you drank some coffee or something, it's just, no, that's not for you. Glycine is not going to calm your brain down. Now, I will say that glycine operates also alongside magnesium. And so if you're very deficient in magnesium, glycine can also be a little bit overstimulating. But as I say, that's a genetic thing. It's in a smaller group of people, but I just want to let people know that that possibly can happen. So that's the amino acid glycine. It's not nearly as famous as a lot of the other ones we talk about, like N-acetylcysteine or glutamine or some of the other ones, but it is very, very necessary in your body. And we do use it as a therapeutic amino acid in people as well. All right. I'm Dr. A. That's it for today. Please do subscribe if you haven't. Like, share, do all the stuff. We're building a great community here, people interested in healthcare information, and I'll see you on the next video.